five, five, four, engine ignition, two, one, zero, and liftoff. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. On July 30th, 2020, a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, carrying the next generation of Mars exploration vehicles, the Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter. And today, on February 18th, 2021, if all goes to plan, the two vehicles will land safely on the Martian surface after their long seven month journey to the Red Planet. Only 40% of missions sent to Mars have been successful, and Perseverance will have to endure a vicious and complicated landing sequence as its creators wait, powerless to intervene, waiting for news of its success back in Pasadena. The Perseverance rover is the largest and heaviest rover JPL has ever sent to Mars heavier than the Curiosity rover by 100 kilograms. And with that extra weight comes a whole host of new gadgets. This isn't some slightly upgraded version of the Curiosity rover. Perseverance is benefiting from almost 10 years of advancement of technology. It's packed with fascinating and novel technologies that will form a stepping stone in humankind's eventual first steps on in the rusty dirt of its new home. There is a whole host of new software upgrades too, like the algorithm that determines when to open the parachute. In the last mission, the parachute simply deployed when the target speed of 1,450 kilometers per hour was reached. After most of the hypersonic re-entry speed of 21,450 kilometers per hour had been bled off. For perseverance, JPL wanted to increase the accuracy of their landing. So this time around, the chute will open when it is approaching the optimal trajectory for the landing site. It will also be scanning the surface of the landing site and correlating those images to its pre-existing map to allow the sky crane to choose the best landing site with minimal obstacles. Perseverance's ground navigation systems have also been significantly upgraded, with its optical sensors feeding data to a machine learning vision algorithm allowing Perseverance to find its own path through the rough terrain of Mars, where Curiosity had to constantly stop and start with help from its earthbound controllers. Perseverance is benefiting massively from the past decade of improvements in autonomous flight and driving developed by the drone and automotive industries. This will mean Perseverance will be able to cover much more ground during its life, here in Jessero Crater, a massive crater that was once home to a lake the same size as Lake Tahoe. You can see the remnants of this ancient river bed and delta spilling into what may have once been a habitable body of water. It is here that Perseverance will scour for signs of life. Before we get into all the gadgets it will use to do this, let's look at how Perseverance will power them. The Perseverance rover features the same radioisotope thermoelectric generator as the Curiosity rover. RTGs work by converting the heat from the natural decay of radioisotopes into electricity. It uses a simple principle called the Seebeck effect to generate electricity. The Seebeck effect essentially allows us to generate an electric to bring soil back from Mars with robots. If that isn't insane engineering, I don't know what is, and we have barely scratched the surface of what this rover is capable of. There is a whole host of new sensors on board that do not require Perseverance to collect soil, each using different forms of electromagnetic radiation to investigate the ground below them. The Sherlock instrument on the robotic head will look for signs of biosignatures using Raman and luminescence spectroscopy, which both detect molecules based on how they interact with UV light. It will sit about 5 centimeters off the ground, where it will focus its UV laser onto the soil and be able to detect chemicals that would indicate the presence of past life. The rover also has an X-ray imager called Pixel that will be able to visualize the texture of the ground below it, looking for tiny variations in geology that would indicate that microbial life has altered its environment. 
while also being able to detect chemical compositions by observing the fluorescence of the target under X-ray electromagnetic radiation. There are several other sensors, like the ground penetrating radar imager located at the rear of the rover, which will give us visualizations of the composition of geology up to 10 meters under the surface, and possibly even identify water resources buried below, a vital resource for human missions. These are just some of the sensors on board, and of course, there are the usual high definition color cameras that are going to send back amazing images to Earth and this time we included a microphone so we'll be able to hear what our future life on Mars may sound like. It may even catch the whirring of helicopter blades off in the distance, because by far the most exciting part of this mission, to me, is the Ingenuity helicopter. After all, if successful, this will be the first time humans have demonstrated controlled, powered flight on another planet. Powered flight on Mars presents many challenges. The atmosphere is about 1% the density of Earth's, meaning there is less air to push down to achieve lift. To combat this, the propeller blades, which are counter-rotating to eliminate the need for a tail rotor, have to spin much faster than a traditional helicopter blade at about 2400 rpm. That's about 5 times faster than an equal sized RC helicopter here on Earth. To deal with the centrifugal forces that come with that, the blades need to be made of high strength carbon composites. These blades also have a much larger angle of attack than your run of the mill blade, allowing them to push a larger volume of air downwards. Since this helicopter will detach from the Perseverance rover, it needs its own power source. Unlike the planned Dragonfly mission to Titan, this helicopter will not have its own give NASA RTG and JPL the information they need to approve and design a future flying rover.